Amen. Worship his majesty, kingdom authority. We're so glad that you are here this morning. Hopefully you're glad this morning to be here and you're experiencing or you're hopefully going to experience a wonderful time. Let's all stand. Take your hymnals this morning. Turn to page number one. Page number one. Joyful, joyful. We adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. All four verses this morning. Lift it up on that first. Really sing it out. It's a wonderful, beautiful day. Good day to be singing. Amen. On that first. Joyful, joyful. adore him this morning? Are you joyfully adoring him this morning? I hope that you are. Well, you're in a great place to do that this morning. Please remain standing as Pastor Mitchell comes to lead us in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as we meet together to remember some things today that are important, we remember those who have given their lives to serve in this country, and we're thankful for each of them bless their families today. We know it's a difficult time for them, and I pray that you bring comfort. We thank you for those that are serving today, uh, that love you, and uh, still defending our great country. We're thankful for that. We're thankful that we can serve you uh, today, and we just ask that uh, through pastor's message today that our hearts would be challenged to be better servants, uh, to, that we might give our lives uh, to serve you uh, on this front where men and women are lost and need a savior. And we just ask your blessing today on all that we do. We give you thanks in the name of our savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, pastor. Amen. Take your hymnals, turn to page number 51. Page number 51. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Wonderful song. All three verses. Sing it out this morning. Amen. With joyful adoration. That just means with a smile, hopefully. All right, let's see those smiles. If you're not smiling, I'm going to look at you. Hi, Brian. <laughs> All right, on that first verse, guide me, oh, that. Here we go. Guide me.
know on page number 175, page 175, man of sorrow, what a name for the son of God who came. Hallelujah, amen. What a savior. I don't know if you're getting a theme. It's all about praising the Lord for what he's done for us today. On that first. Let's do it in the right key this time. Sorry about that. On verse 2. Bearing shame, scoffing food, in my place condemned he soon, sealed by heart with his blood. Alleluia, what a Savior. Hill You're singing so great, you can be seated. Thank you so much for singing out. At this time, Brother Ivan's going to come and lead us in our offering. Well, good morning. Uh, thank you for being here with us. Thank you for the uh, visitors. Uh, glad you have this, uh, spent your time with us. Um, I just a uh, quick reminder uh, thank you for your faithfulness and for you willing to uh, serve God through the giving uh, through Cornerstone. Uh, so, reminded the uh, there, uh, we have at least three ways to give. Is one is the communion table here up front. Uh, the other ones you can drop your uh, uh, you give in at the uh, church office, and also you can give online. So let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for the privilege, Lord, to be in your house. I ask you uh, bless, Lord, uh, these offerings, Lord. Father, you know the sacrifice that happened, Lord, behind that uh, giving, Lord. And Lord, you are. Uh, you are the one that gives the ultimate sacrifice. I want you to bless uh, the hearts of your people, Lord, and that you, uh, that the church might we use uh, this money, Lord, to make an impact with the gospel, Lord, for the, our community, Lord, and to the world. In Jesus Christ's name, I ask you and thank you and praise you. Amen. Conservative or liberal, however they're defined, it's not about interpretation or the judgment of the mind. It's the opposite of politics, power, or prestige. It's about a simple message, and whether we believe it's still the cross. sin and sets the captive free it's still the name the name of Jesus 
Jesus that has power to save the lost. It's still the cross. Well, we can water down theology and preach a word to suit our needs. We can justify sweet, subtle lies that are wrapped in noble deeds. We can alter our convictions to adapt to social whims, but we cannot change the gospel or the truth contained within. It's still the cross. It's still the blood of Calvary that cleanses sin and sets the captive free. It's still the Still the cross. Amen. Oh, man. I wish I could sing our brother Daryl. That's all right. That's all right. Page 393. Let's stand one more time. What a wonderful spirit that's in the church right now. But you know what the Bible it says? Not the Bible, but the song says, All is vain unless the Spirit of the Lord comes down. And as we sing this next song, page 393, Nearer my God to thee. Hope that's your that's your prayer to us today, is that all is vain. Nothing else matters unless the Lord comes down to talk with us right now. At the beginning of that fourth verse, we'll go ahead and dismiss our junior church kids to the back at the beginning of that fourth verse. But on that first, near my God to thee, lift it up with me.
and wonderful singing. Go ahead and grab your Bibles now as Robert comes to lead us in our scripture reading. And then after that, the brass ensemble is going to come play for us. John chapter number 12 is where we'll be in our scripture reading this morning. John chapter number 12. We'll read verse number 1 down to verse number 11. If you don't have a Bible, you can follow it on screen or we have it in the back of the pew. John chapter 12, starting in verse number 1. The Bible says, Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead, there they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, Why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bare what was put therein. Then said Jesus, Let her alone. Against the day of my bearing hath she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you. But me ye have not always. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he hath raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, because that by reason of him many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this morning that we have to be in your house, and Lord, we pray that you would be with Pastor as he preaches to us, that uh, we would have open hearts and open minds to receive what it is that your word has to say to us. We thank you for uh, the sacrifice that so many made for us to be here this morning, and I uh, thank you for the freedom that we are able to enjoy in this country. Lord, we pray that you would just uh, give us a great time around your word this morning. In your name I pray, amen. You may be seated.
holy, 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 and he deed is holy. One of the things that I read yesterday, I, my wife went and found for me because I couldn't find it this morning. So I'm thankful for the computer, but it said this, just kind of put things into perspective for today. Armed Forces Day, the third Saturday in May, is a day to appreciate Americans currently serving in uniform. And we do, and you should. You should thank soldiers and sailors and Marines and airmen and guardsmen when you see them. There's nothing wrong with thanking these young ladies and these young gentlemen and, uh, and even the older ones that have been in for a while that, uh, that serve. You'll never know what it's like unless you've served and, uh, and have been away from home and things. And you should thank them for their service. And then it says Veterans Day, which is November the 11th. It's a day that we honor Americans who once served in the uniform. And we have many of those in here. I think we have more Army than anything else, Army and Navy and, and Marines. And even, we even, even have Air Force. And I just don't think we have any Coast Guardsmen in here, do we? I don't think so. But, uh, and we should honor them on that day. This is what really put it into perspective for me. Memorial Day, the last Monday in May, the day to remember the Americans who never got to take off that uniform because they gave their life in service to the country. Remember the first time that I got to go out to sea, first day out was the, uh, was the 4th of July. And I got to watch a burial at sea. And that just really kind of just reminded me of what we were getting ourselves into. And while we were gone for that six-month float, we had two people that perished on the ship that we were riding. I was with a Marine Expeditionary Force. Two of the crewmen were killed in a helicopter accident. But as we sit here this morning, we need to remember we're sitting here at the cost of someone else's blood. As Americans, those who have, who have died and fought for us, and as Christians, the Savior who went to the cross and died for each and every one of us. It's important for us to remember days like this and to remember these men and women. The title of my message this morning is this, what will you be remembered for? If you were to go downtown in Indianapolis, you'll, I found out after living here now for 20 something years that Indianapolis is second only to uh, our nation's capital, Washington DC and monuments. When we first came and we had our day off on Monday, we would go down and start exploring things. One of the neatest buildings that you'll find downtown is, uh, is, a, is I can't remember what it's called, but it's a great big square building and uh, that uh, just talks about all of the wars that Indiana has fought in. And you can walk through, starting in the basement all the way through, or you can go into where the, uh, uh, the, the top is, the top room. And, uh, and it's uh, dedicated to World War II memories. And everything that's in that room came from a country that participated in World War II. We took our teenagers there. We were doing a destination unknown one time. And it, it was springtime and it snowed. So we really couldn't go to Brown County and because uh, we weren't prepared for that. So we went downtown and uh, one of the guards there uh, took us up into that room and explained everything to us. And it was just awesome. Or you can go down on the river walk, which is uh, one of my favorite things to do. And on one end, you'll find a memorial to the USS Indianapolis. If you've never read the book or you have never uh, seen a, a, a movie about that, you ought to watch it. We had the privilege of having one of the survivors here come and, and to speak to us uh, about uh, what took place and what went on for those three days that he was in that water. And a lot of those men are starting to pass away. I remember going down to a parade at one time downtown. We took our kids and they were honoring all the survivors of the USS Indianapolis. And, uh, and I just thought that was just one of, the, one of the neatest things to get to see, see those men. We went down one year for the 500 Festival Parade 
and they were honoring. They had just uh, uh, opened up. Uh, there's another memorial down there to the Congressional Medal of Honor winners. And, uh, and they uh, had all 90 of, this, uh, of the men that had that on floats, on three different floats. I remember standing there with our kids and our, our youngest son uh, was just, uh, I don't know, probably in third or fourth grade. And, and I told him, I said, we're going to get to see some heroes today. And he kept asking me, hey, Daddy, when are the heroes coming by? And I remember as the float came by, and you see those men that won that prestigious award, the Congressional Medal of Honor, just as they came by, I just caught the eye of one, and, and I, I stood, and I didn't know what else to do but to salute him and say thank you. And he saluted back. I look over, and Nathaniel's got his hand up, doing the same thing. You know, those memorials are there to remind us of the sacrifices that people have made. If you go down to the Congressional Medal of Honor Memorial, you'll hear the sound of a snare drum playing. And then you'll start to hear a story of somebody who was on that glass. And you get to hear the story of their life. This morning, in the scripture reading that we have, there are three people that are mentioned uh, here that are remembered for something. Now, there's no greater contrast that we can draw between uh, two different people. I'm just going to get into my introduction and get going. And uh, then, you, then you can of, of Paul and Nero. Neither one, none of one, neither one are mentioned in the scriptures that we have today, but I want you to think about something. Nero was the Roman emperor seated on a throne. His name was known throughout the world, uh, through the, through the, throughout the Roman Empire. Paul was an obscure Jew, totally unimpressive in his physical appearance in reference to himself in his letters uh, uh, to the churches. He lives in a distant corner of the Roman Empire and was a leader of a small uh, group uh, known as Christians or to Nero, troublemakers. Now, virtually no one uh, at that time had heard of Paul. Now, we've heard of Paul because we've studied the word of God. But during that time, as far as the world was concerned, most, most people had not heard of Paul while well, everyone knew of Nero. But isn't it interesting that after 2,000 years, we name our sons Paul and name our dogs Nero. You ever thought about that? Tells us in Luke chapter 12, verses 8 and 9, But I say uh, unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. And he that, uh, but he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. Now in our story in John chapter number 12, really starts back in Luke chapter number 10. So if you would, turn to Luke, Luke 10. And we're, there are three people that are mentioned here. Now, we know that, that uh, it's talking about Lazarus, who had been raised from the dead. And, of course, Jesus was the one that raised him from the dead. But there are three uh, obscure people that are mentioned in this passage in Romans chapter number 12. And we're going to read about two of them uh, uh, over here uh, in, in Luke chapter uh, number 10. Uh, for what they were remembered for or where their life started remembered for. One of them, uh, we find, uh, was known for a life dedicated uh, to service. If you're in, in Luke chapter number 10, look at verse number 38. And it says this, Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. So Jesus and his entourage, the, the people that come with him, uh, have come to, to Bethany and, and, and Mary, or Martha uh, receives her, him into the house and she is preparing uh, uh, food for them and, and, uh, and getting water and, and, and just taking care of them uh, while they are there. Verse number 39 says this, and, and she had a sister named Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about, much uh, about, much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore to help me. 
And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful about and tr- there are careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. So the first person that we see is Martha. Now, Martha is often found in Scripture uh, serving others. And there's nothing wrong with serving others. There's nothing wrong with finding a ministry or, or, or finding some way to give back to others. She uh, had willingly received Christ into her home. But we also, as you read about her, she was someone who knew Christ uh, as her Savior. She was a believer uh, in Christ. But uh, she really wanted to, uh, to take care of him. She was uh, having him in her home and was serving the the word of God tells us that she was cumbered about or she was, she was busy or she was anxious uh, in her service. She wanted to make sure that everything was just right. You ever met somebody like that? That, I mean, just everything had to be uh, just a certain way or just right. And, and uh, uh, they, they looked and thought, well, maybe I don't have enough, so I'm just going to make even more uh, uh, food than that. And, and uh, uh, they're worried about the, how the tables and chairs set up and make sure the napkins are laid out right and all, all of those things. Anybody live with somebody like that? <laughs> I just spent a vacation watching somebody work like that. I'd say, why don't you come out and let's sit down or let's do it. Yeah, I've got this to do. I've got that to do. Cumbered about with much serving. But that's, that's where their joy comes from. And here, there was nothing wrong with that. She, she wanted to make things just right. After all, she had the God of the universe sitting inside of her home. I don't think she was trying to impress Jesus in any way. I think she just wanted to make sure everything was just perfect for him. I really do. She wanted to make a good impression on her honored guest. But we see that she had a complaint She went to the Lord and said, hey, I'm doing this all by myself. Sometimes we as Christians, when we have a ministry or God has asked us to do something, we feel like we're serving all by ourselves. Or if we are serving, people aren't doing it like we do it. So it's not right. You ever met anybody like that? I mean, you're going to see two different styles of preaching today. Brother James is going to get up here, and he's going to have, like, no notes. He's going to have his Bible, and he's going to preach a fantastic message right down there. I go, man, why can't I do that? It's just different styles. If Pastor Mitchell was to, to, to come up, it would be a different style. People do things differently. It's okay. People teach Sunday school classes differently. It's okay. It really is Okay. God doesn't make cookie cutter Christians. But Martha was, she, she was a server. But she went to the Lord, she had a complaint. She saw a physical need and tried to get it done. But in doing that, she was neglecting her spiritual need. Because I'm sure that she was very surprised by the answer that the Lord had, had given her. Uh, if you look down, she, she goes to him in verse number 40 and says, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me uh, to serve alone? Said, she, she's in here listening to you. She's in here listening to the teaching. She's in here listening to, to, to God's word while I'm busy back here getting the biscuits and gravy ready. Don't, don't you care? Don't you see that, that you need to rebuke her and tell her, hey, get in there and get busy. But I love the way the Lord lovingly answers her. He says in verse number 41, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Jesus recognized her service. He recognized that she was trying to do a good job in what she was doing. She was careful. She had planned. She was careful. And then the other word, excuse me there, and troubled. 
said she would have planned, but boy, she was just, just going through a lot of trouble. And yes, those, those things needed to be done. But then he gives her a mild rebuke here when he says this, Mary hath chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. See, in the rebuke, he recognized that she was doing things for him when she really needed to learn how to, to be a servant for him. It tells us in Psalm chapter number uh, 27, verse 4, these words. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire at his temple. Now, sometimes we get so busy serving the Lord that we forget to take time to be with the Lord. You know, I... I Especially, I've had the privilege of going to Bible college and graduating from Bible college. One thing that I learned my first couple of years there is you can get so busy doing things for the Lord. Or doing things as a Christian that you forget to be a Christian. That you forget to take that time to be with him that you forget to take the time to, to listen to his word or to hear his word when you're not studying for something else. Martha was busy. She was a believer. She believed in Christ. But Jesus was only going to be around for a little while. And Mary wanted to get everything that she possibly could. And that became a, a mild rebuke to her. Uh, turn back, if you would, hold your place there, but turn back to John chapter number 12. This time we find her serving with the right attitude. John chapter 12, first couple of verses said this, then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom now was raised from the dead. And there they made him a supper, and Martha served but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. This time she was just serving. She was doing her part. She wasn't complaining. You know, she is remembered, Martha is, remembered for her life of dedicated service. Word of God tells us in, <clears throat> in Ephesians chapter number 6, verses 4 through 8, these words. Servants, be obedient to them. That are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and singleness of your heart, as unto Christ. Not with eye service as man pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will doing service as unto the Lord, and not unto men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. You know, our, our work ethic should be the best. People should recognize us as Christians on the job as his servants. We are to work as unto the Lord. We are to work as if our boss is the Lord, which in essence he really is. You know why? Because we leave a testimony everywhere we go. And we want to leave a good name. We don't want to shame the family name. And here, Martha, towards the, uh, towards the end of her life, or the last thing we read really about her, is that she was a servant. She had a heart to serve. She saw a need. She took the lead. James said this morning, a need seen is a command given. She was just a servant. She saw it, she did it, she took care of it. And it's important to be a good servant. We are told in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a what? A living sacrifice. If we're a sacrifice, then we're dead unto ourselves. 
And as a sacrifice, we are to be wholly acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And be not conformed, let me see, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When we think about Martha, we think about someone who was dedicated to service, to service to others, service to the Lord. And then we look at the life of her sister Mary, a life that was dedicated to worship. Now, Mary is often found in scriptures at the feet of Jesus. Why is that? She desired uh, uh, to hear what he had to say. She sat at his feet despite being called out uh, in, in, in back in Luke chapter number 10, despite being called out of, uh, physically for not serving him like others were doing. I want you to notice something, though. She did not try to defend herself while she was there. She didn't say, hey, I, I set the table before I got down, or I, I this, or I that. Her mind was concentrated on one thing. That was learning at the feet of Jesus was learning what the Lord had to teach. She didn't try to defend herself. I remember one time talking to pastor, and he said something that, that was life-changing for me. He said this, remember your character will always take care of itself. Sometimes we, people start questioning our motives or question what we're doing or, or why we're doing it in a certain way. You know what? Our character will take care of itself. We don't have to defend uh, ourselves. In Luke chapter number 10 and verse 42, Jesus said this of her, said, one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall, not, which shall not be taken away from her. She had a desire to continue to lean on Jesus. Uh, back in um, the book of John, Chapter number 11, uh, <clears throat> starting in verse 28. Let me get back. Oops, wrong place. <coughs> uh, we see that Mary was, our, was very dependent upon uh, the Lord. Uh, here, when uh, her brother was, uh, was dead and he was, had been in the grave, and uh, for four days, uh, Jesus came upon the scene. And uh, the Word of God tells us, verse 28, and when... Uh, she had said so, and verse 28 says, Yea, the Lord, um, uh, uh, talking about Martha, said, And when she had said so, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master cometh and calleth for thee. And as soon as she heard that, she quickly, uh, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus would not yet come into town, but was in the place where Martha met him. And the Jews which were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary that she rose up hastily and went to uh, went out, followed her, saying, She goeth to the grave to weep there. And when Mary was come to where Jesus was, that she saw him, and she fell down at his feet, saying, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. And Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping came uh, with her, and he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Now we see that <clears throat> when, uh, uh, when it came time, uh, in need, she had a desire to lean on him. When she came, uh, when, when he called for her, she came. And then she questioned, she asked a question without questioning him. She said, Lord, we know that if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But there's probably a purpose uh, in this and, and, and we're depending upon you for what that purpose is. She had a desire to worship him. In John chapter 12 and verse 3, we see that she uh, worshipped him a, a, in a special way. Her brother had been, had been raised, but she gave something very expensive. Uh, turn back to chapter number 12. In chapter 12, we see that she worships Jesus in a different way. She's at his feet again, but this time she uh, isn't just listening, but she is performing uh, uh, something. And, and uh, it says this, and she, Then Mary took a, pie, uh, a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped her feet, uh, excuse me, wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Now she uh, sacrificed the very best that she had. She had a desire to worship him. 
and uh, <clears throat> the Word of God tells us that she had something that was very expensive. Now, it was, <clears throat> it was an alabaster box of spikenard that weighed a Roman uh, pound or was about 12 ounces. Now, the perfume was exacted from the root of the nard plant, which grew in India. So it was very costly to import. <clears throat> It, uh, it, it was its estimated worth, according to the scripture, was 300 pence or uh, the amount of the wages of a common person received for 300 days of work. Now think about that. She gave the very best that she had to anoint the Lord's feet. Now think about that. Now I, I, I don't know about you, I don't, I don't have a lot of foo-foo stuff. I have some cologne that my wife really likes for me to wear. So I wear it because I want her to stay attracted to me. And uh, not only in looks, but, you know, remember who I am. But that's not what she was doing. She took something that was very precious to her, that was very private to her, and she broke it and it spilled out all over him. It says that she gave all she had, said that she break the box and poured it on his head. Now, this statement refers to a jar sealed in a manner that required the breakage of the neck. And therefore, its contents would all come out at one time. Now, we know that it, that it came out and it had a beautiful smell to it. It says the entire house was filled with this ointment. Now, you get a bunch of people in a house, especially in, in that kind of climate... And uh, it's usually not an attractive smell. But something was going on here. All of a sudden, everybody in the house could smell what was going on. And then they saw the action to where she was wiping his feet with her hair. There's nothing more humbling. There was no more humble service that you could perform on somebody than to wash their feet. If next Sunday we were to have three people out in the foyer as you came in with a bucket and a towel ready to wash your feet, most people would turn around and come in through another door. Why? We're not used to that. Most of us don't want to mess with people's feet unless you're Dr. Ray, okay? Tired foot doctor, whatever you call those people. I know it starts with a P, but I can't ever remember the, the correct word for it. Podiatrist, thank you. But most of us don't want to do that. And most people don't want to have their feet messed with. My wife keeps telling me, you should go get a pedicure. I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. I've even had some other men said, oh, I've done it. You should try it. It's fun. No, these are my feet. Leave them alone. But think of the humble act of worship. She took the very best that she had and gave it to the Lord to clean his feet with and then took what was a glory to her, her hair, and used it to wipe the dust and the dirt off her feet. What she was showing is that she was willing not only to give her all, but to be all in, in worshiping the Lord. Brother Ivan said today in the book of Mark, it says that this shall be a memorial to her. This happened 2,000 plus years ago and we're still talking about it today. Why? Because she was remembered for her dedicated worship. Word of God tells us in Exodus chapter 34 verse 14. It says, For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. God wants our all. 
He does, doesn't want us worshiping something, someone else or something else. Psalm chapter 29, verse 2 tells us this, Give unto the Lord the glory due his name and worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. John chapter 4, verse 24 said, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We have Martha, who's dedicated servant. We have Mary, who is remembered for her dedicated worship in God. And then we have one other person, and he's not remembered for anything positive. We see a life dedicated to self. In John chapter number 12, look at verse number 4. Then one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, uh, say, uh, saith one of his disciples, Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Boy, doesn't he sound noble? Why are you wasting all of this on Jesus' feet when we could have done something with this money that would have been a whole lot more helpful? There's always those people in the crowd that don't understand. But yet the word of God gives us his motive. Look at verse number six. It says, this he said not because he cared for the poor, but... He was a thief and had the bag and, but, and bear what was therein. Now Judas lived a life that fooled others around him. He was trusted by the other disciples to be the treasurer. He had the bag. He called Mary's sacrifice of worship a waste because it was way too costly to be used on just one person. But it wasn't just one person, it was the Lord. He knew the worldly value and he wanted it for himself and he led others around him to condemn the woman's worship. If you would, turn one chapter over to John chapter 13. We see something about him. Look starting down in verse 21. It says this, and when Jesus uh, had thus said, he was troubled in his spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of, uh, of whom he spake. And now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Talking about John, the writer of the book. Verse 24, and Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him, John, and asked who uh, should it be of whom he spake. And then lying on Jesus' breast, he said unto him, Lord, who is it? Then Jesus said, he it is to whom I shall give a sop. That's just where a uh, sop was where he would dip the bread into, uh, uh, into some oil or to some juice and then give it to uh, someone. <clears throat> and when, when I have dipped it, and when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. So Jesus pointed out to the disciples who exactly who it was. He said, by this action, you're going to know who it is. But I want you to notice what the word of God says. It says, and after, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and after the sop, Satan entered into him. Judas heard that as well. You ever thought about that? Judas knew what he was going to do. Jesus pointed him out. And uh, it says, then, he, then said <clears throat> Jesus unto him, uh, that thou doest, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought because Judas had the bag, that Jesus said unto him, buy those things which are needful against, uh, th that, are, that we have need of, against the feast or that he should give something to the poor and, and then having received the sop went out immediately out went immediately out and it was night he had a chance to turn around he had a chance not to do what he was getting ready to do but yet he was so self-centered that he could only see how he could better himself 
Now, Judas' life is remembered for his failure to truly believe. I want you to think about some things. Number one, he walked with the creator and the savior of the world for three years, but never truly understood who he was. I want you to think about that. There are many people today that attend church. They come. They may even, even carry their own Bible with them. But yet they never truly believe who Jesus Christ is. They never truly believe what the word of God has to say. And one of these days they're going to be very surprised when that last trump sounds. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those that are alive and remain shall be caught up with him when the rapture happens. That they're still here. It's because they only have a head knowledge of Jesus Christ. Like Judas, he never had a heart knowledge. Number two, he witnessed firsthand many of the miracles that Jesus had done, but he never truly believed that he was God. He listened to Jesus preach the word of God, but he never allowed it to change his heart. He realized his life was lived serving self, but he never repented and he died lost in his sin. He understood that he betrayed innocent blood, but he never repented. He took his own life. And it wasn't the taking of his own life that sent him to hell. It was the fact that he never believed that Jesus was who he said he was. In John chapter number 17, verse 12, we read these words. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, save the son of perdition, talking about Judas, that the scripture might be fulfilled. This morning, we have seen examples of three different people whom knew Jesus personally. When their names are mentioned in scripture, we who have read their stories in the word of God will already have formed an opinion of them. Why? Because of the testimony that they have left behind. Their personal testimony has built a monument, so to speak, to their lives. But we too are doing the same. When your name is mentioned, people already formulate an opinion of you. What is it? What is that opinion? What do people have? What type of monument are you building? What type of monument are you building here at church when your name is mentioned? What type of monument or what will you be remembered for at work, in your work ethic? What about your neighbors? What do they see? Everywhere we go, we carry our testimony. If you know Christ as your Savior, you have his name. Let's not shame the family name. Does a life that we live honor or shame the cause of Christ? Only you can control that. Only you can. Let's stand together with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. I know that this was a very simplistic message, but I think it was a very needful message just to be reminded. You know, we're getting ready to celebrate a Memorial Day. Or decoration day. But all of us. Right now. Are leaving a legacy behind. To our families. To our fellow church members. To the world. Hopefully. People can see Jesus in you. Can they? It all starts with knowing him as your Lord and personal Savior. Maybe you're here this morning and and you truly don't know for sure, 100% sure whether you know Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Why not let one of these young ladies or, or gentlemen up here take the word of God and show you how you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Or maybe you are saved and you've just been struggling. Why not have one of these men or ladies come up if you want to come up to the altar and pray with you? about getting back on track for Christ. Whatever your need is this morning, the altar is open for you. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. 
Thank you, Lord, for your word. And I thank you, Lord, for uh, the Marys and Marthas that we have, Lord, here uh, within our church. Lord, that we can uh, see by their example their love for you and their service and in their worship. I just pray, God, that we would not become Judas's, Lord, and only serve self. Lord, but we would learn to serve others by serving you. Lord, I pray that you just be this time of invitation. We ask your precious name. Amen. I'm going to be singing. Uh, the words will be up on the screen or in your book. If you'd like to turn there, page 438, Cleanse Me, as Brother James leads us. Search me Is that your prayer, that the Lord would take your life and take your will and that you surrender and allow him to abide in and through you? I hope that's your prayer this morning. Please be seated for just a moment. And our brother James is going to come up and give us some instructions. This is a fifth service Sunday for us, which means that uh, we're getting ready to go have lunch and uh, here uh, at church. And I know that, that we have some uh, plenty. Maybe you didn't come prepared to do that. We ask our folks to bring uh, extra, and uh, they're going to be serving us, and he's going to explain all that to us. But uh, we're going to have our afternoon service, our evening service at 1.15 at today. So if you want to go out uh, somewhere and uh, grab a bite to eat, just please be back at 1.15. And Brother James will be preaching for us, looking forward to that. Brother James, give us the instructions we need. Before we start giving out instructions, don't forget that we do have the father-son activity um, out there, and there's a sign-up sheet. Um, we need to sign up for that. We will not buy probably need more tickets than what is signed up, all right? So make sure that's out there, or make sure that you sign up out there for the father and son activity, um, or just it could just be a men's activity as well. And so also, we have uh, Vacation Bible School that's coming up at the end of June. We didn't get to do it last year because of COVID, but this year we're doing it. We're doing a Sunday night through a Wednesday. So Sunday night, Monday morning, Tuesday morning, and then a Wednesday morning from 10 to 12. Um, there is a sign-up sheet. Um, I need three teachers. All right, I need three teachers. So if you're willing to teach and willing willing to do that, um, I've already got my crafts, my games, and um, my um, snack and different things like that. Um, but we're looking to have um, a good group this year. Uh, we'll also be going out and doing some door knocking and some, we're going to be um, um, 
blitzing as well, putting out some flyers. And so just be ready for that when that comes. And so several announcements um, that we can make at the, at the end of next um, service, all right? We do have our fifth Sunday right now. And so um, if anybody, if any of the ladies need to go back, I think they already are all back. Um, but what we have right now is we have um, all the chairs are set up down in the cafeteria. And what we've done is we've taken up some of those, um, the, the church, I'm sorry, the school seats and different things like that. So we do have tables with the nice, comfortable white chairs. Um, we would ask that you would um, save those for some of our more experienced um, people and members of our church. All right. And so, um, do you know what I mean? And so let's make sure that we do that. Um, and then also um, the deacons and deacons wives, you will be served the food. You can go up there, you can still get as much as you want. Um, take as much as you want, but you will be served that. We thought just maybe one more time, uh, we'll do that just to make sure um, everything is good to go so we're not touching 14 different spatulas and different things like that. And so we have um, a bre uh, breakfast table. That's good too. Dessert table down in the cafeteria. Uh, that's going to be on single plates. You can go up there and get those yourself. But when it comes to the food, you'll go into the gym. Um, you'll grab your plate and all that kind of stuff. You'll be handed all of that. And then you'll go through and you'll be served. Then you can go down there and get your drink and different things like that. Again, if you are a visitor and you didn't bring anything or if you're a member and you didn't bring anything, please stay anyway. I'm sure we have um, plenty of food down there. We'd love to get to know you and fellowship with, the, with, the, with you just a little bit more. All right? Very good. We, we appreciate everyone being here today. Um, and we're excited for what the Lord is doing. Please be back to this afternoon at 1.15. I promise you, you're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be, it's just, I'm giving something away that's just going to be, that's going to absolutely blow your mind, all right? Absolutely blow your mind, so please make sure you're here for that. Um, and then tomorrow, it's one of our most favorite days of the whole entire year, okay? We get to go to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and have fun, shh, and have fun, all right, we're not doing anything else except going there and gonna look at all the cars and all that kind of stuff. So if you would like to do that, we're leaving here at 7.30 in the morning. All right, if I'm being vague, I'm being vague on purpose, okay? Please do not ask Miss Karen what we're doing tomorrow, okay? Because she will give you not the right answer of what we're doing, all right? So please make sure you're here, teenagers, parents, everybody, it's a good way to make some money to go to camp or to send kids to camp. You say, well, I don't have any money to send kids to camp or to send kids to do this. Well, it's great, you can come out and help us um, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway tomorrow. I promise an hour and a half to two hours. If it's more, it takes more than two hours, I'll let you go and I'll finish it myself, all right? Me and Brother Will will, all right? Let's all stand. We'll be dismissed in prayer. We'll be dismissed in prayer. Thank you guys so much. Um, I don't think, I think all the deacons and deacons' wives are back there. If not, you need to head back there. All right. Thank you guys so much for, for coming and for being a part of our services today. Brother Daryl, right from where you're standing, go ahead and lead us in prayer.